a lot of people say, well, just skin it, it's easier. And my reply usually is, it's easier just to go to the grocery store and buy your pork. <laughs> um, no one's doing this because it, it's easy. And so they do all of this hard work until the last day and they're like, ah, who cares? And cut off, you know, 20% of the weight of the pig. It's just bonkers to me. Um, and they say, well, it's easier. And the other thing they'll say is like, well, I don't have the setup for it. If you can boil water, you can scald a pig. It's very, like you don't need any other thing than boiling water. We're not doing the boiling water technique today. That's what we use. Yeah, if you boil water and pour over the pig and scrape the hair off, that's all you need. Like, and you don't even need a propane burner. If you, if you think ahead enough, you can build a raging fire vessel over a fire because you don't have to regulate the temperature it's boiling who cares so um yeah i can i can get on the soapbox and talk about the scalding yeah. versus skinning for a while um and, and anecdotally it's it's uh when you skin it's much harder to keep the meat clean yes a lot of dust particles get on it so if so, you've ever if you ever pulled the hide off of an animal like a deer or a lamb or goat any particle that's near that thing education that we're doing like most people in America don't think of pig skin as being food right so like we try to show people like the breakfast that we're gonna eat on the last day is a dish that we make called geta and it has like 20% skin as food you know like and it and when you taste it you're not gonna be like oh the skin tastes delicious you're not even gonna register the fact that there's skin in it um, so the skin is food like people think of pork rinds but there's a lot of other things you can do I'll stop about that. <laughs> Will you be going over the, the scrapers? Yeah, actually, I, I was hoping more of the people would come over here because it's a lot quieter over here. Yeah. Um, you can use a lot of different things for scrapers. Where we were in Ohio, or where we live in Ohio, they used bell scrapers, which are just a little round disc on a piece of wood, basically. We have like four or five of them. We'll use them. Um, but you don't have to use them. I've seen people just take a mason jar lid and like fold it and use that. It's got that little kind of sharp lip on it. You can use that. You can use a knife. Um, if the scald's really good, I'm not going to guarantee this one is because red pigs are usually a pain in the butt to scald, to be perfectly honest. But if certain types of pigs are easier to scald. Sometimes you can just scrape off the hair and the first layer of skin with your hands if it's really good. Um, so whatever really gets the skin off. And first, what, the what, first layer of skin in the hair. What makes a really good scald just the right temperature? Um, or it's time and temperature and agitation of the pig. So you need the water to get to the skin. Because what we're actually doing is giving this pig a full body second degree burn. Yeah. Is what we're doing. So a first degree burn, your skin won't blister. A third degree burn, you're actually cooking your skin and some of the flesh underneath it. Second degree burn, your skin will blister. That's what we want to happen to this pig. That first layer of skin, the epidermis, will blister, and when you go to scrape it, the hair and that first layer of skin will come off. So that's the idea. So when you're you're pulling or when you're scraping, you should see the red layer of this pig come off. Okay. When we're done scraping this pig, it'll be the color of his jacket, hopefully. Hopefully. That's why all pigs look the same after they've been scalded. Yeah. They're <laughs> black, red, spotted. Gotcha. Now, sometimes there's like a little bit of leftover of that pigment. Yeah. Where you can actually scrub that off with like a scrubber. So what's going to happen is we're going to transfer that pig. It's not that dirty. We'll spray it off a little bit, but again, we don't want to introduce a lot of water to everything. And we'll put it on those pallets that are beside that trough. And we'll get the water ready in the trough. And we have two sets of, we have one set of chains, there's two of them, that will wrap around in front of the back legs and behind the front legs wrap it around and there's handles on each side 
there'll be two people on the far side of the pallets and two people on the side of the trough and we'll slowly lower it into the water so we're not splashing okay. everywhere and then as it's in the water the people that are on those chains will pull back and forth that's the agitation part i was telling you about you need the water to get to the skin um, and that agitation helps a lot and then after it's been in there depending on how submerged it is in the water doug or someone else that's helping might get some buckets of really hot water and pour over top of the pig, the pig if it's not fully submerged to introduce more hot water and keep that side um, in hot water we might have to roll it over and completely flip it in the trough which isn't that bad and then we'll it's kind of cool doing it in the trough because you can see it the chains will actually start removing some of the hair so you'll kind of have an idea of when it's ready you'll see it we'll check some of the back hair to make sure it pulls off really easily and when that's all when we think we're good we'll use those chains and put it back up onto the pallets and scrape it we'll finish one side of scraping roll it over and finish the other side of scraping that's the idea is there a is there after you after you start the ball is there a time is there a time when they were having it outside that we want the hair to sit to the bottom of the scrape? After it's been scalded? After it's been scalded. No. Right. After it's been scalded, it's like you get a second degree burn. You get a blister on your hand from a burn. That blister doesn't like re adhere to your other layers of skin. It's off. So theoretically, you could scald it. We could go eat lunch and come back and you'd be able to scrape it. Um, I don't recommend doing that, but yeah, you don't. Once it's scalded, it's scalded. The only thing that would mess it up is if you put it back into hot water and start cooking the skin for some reason. Because um, if you over scald, the skin becomes soft and your scrapers will cut into it. So you, you wanna, again, it's that second degree burn versus third degree burn. Once you start cooking the skin, the skin is starting to break down and the scrapers will go into it and you'll have cuts in it. And then sometimes you'll be cutting into the skin and the hair won't be coming which is a very frustrating place to be. If you get to that spot, um, is that what you, say, you sharpen your <laughs> knives and start, no, we still don't skin. <laughs> still don't skin. Um, then you would start shaving. Um, the other option that we'll do a little bit of is uh, torching or singeing. Sometimes there are little hairs that don't pull out and you can't scrape off. We have a little torch that sometimes we'll just go and do a little bit of cleanup work and singe all the little hairs that don't quite go away the way we want them to. It's a 159, which is a little bit higher than we like. Dimitri, she's helping out. Spray this pig off to get some of the mud and things off of it because mm -hmm. if you don't clean it off and there's mud and matter packed on it, then the water can't get to the skin, which is a problem. Uh, but what that also means is that the, the water that's on this pig is cold now, mm -hmm. which will also help change the temperature of this water. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. Do you want to drop it in the water 150 or do you want the adjusted No, we On a day like today, because of the size of the pig and the temperature change of this water, if we drop it in mid-150s, we'll be just fine. Our issue is, uh, if we were dunking in a barrel, we might bring the water to the barrel. We have a burn under there. We can maintain this. There's no way for us to keep this water. So now um, we're going to need four able bodied people that are going to work together to lower the pig in. And when it's in, your job's not done. You're going to start rowing together to slosh that pig around. Doug and I will be right here. Sometimes the feet will pop up. We want to keep those in the water as much as we can. We might even have someone bucket some water on top of the pig, depending on what the water temperature is. Speaking of that, do you have the thermometer? Yeah. If someone wants to take the thermometer, what we also need is the water temp while the pig's in it, just so you guys have an idea of what the water temp is as it's scalding. And then if someone has an electronic device that can keep time in their pocket, um, it's nice for us to have uh, some benchmarks as far as like how much time the pig's been in there. So when it's in, we usually start a timer for about two minutes to give us a good indication of how long it's been in. Somebody want to do the timer? Your name is? Caleb Scott. And who's going to do the temp? Did you pass off the? No. Are you going to do it? Two people on those chains. Two people on these chains. 
what's going to happen is you're going to pull, and once he gets to that edge, he's going to be fighting you. Everybody understand what's going on? Go! Just kidding. Do you know what the tempo is right now? That's right. Do you know what the tempo is right now? I'm actually going to scoot her butt over. 57. All right, perfect. Go! A little bit. Oh, boy. Or you go through the 55 gallon drum like that. But there's no option for not scalding. No. No, yeah. you want to be first. Though. No, not for us. <laughs> there is a large group of people that skin their face. None of you are in that group of people. <laughs> so because this side of the pig is not in the water in just a little bit, we're going to roll. Over so the other side gets in the water. We're down to 51. Okay. Yes, good, good, good. It is, until we roll it over. Dimitri, Dimitri's got a bucket of water yeah. ready for you. Yeah. You can actually do that. Excuse me. That's a 90 amount of agitation, or more or less. That's okay. They're doing great. <laughs> It's usually ideal if someone else is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you can tell, I spread the ear, and that's all hair on the ear. Which is a good sign, but ears are usually easy, and then that's off the back. So we do want to roll it. How much time has it been, Caleb? Two minutes. Okay, we're going to help. Like that. One, hot. Pull this way. Here we go. Do a little bit more. And so you can see this side of the pig. What's happening? It's now white right there. It's a huh. more. Sometimes the shoulders are a little bit more difficult, but that shoulder is okay. Gotta keep the feet in. 148. Here, here's coming off. Maybe one more. You have another bucket. <laughs> So Doug just said it's 147 right now, which is still above our 145 temperature that we want to keep it at. 48. Did you keep rolling the timer or did you start the timer? What are we at now? Do you find certain parts of the animal are harder to sc scrape than others? Yeah. And so do you check those now when you're Yeah, the shoulder and the back, usually. The feet sometimes, but this pig is getting scalded pretty well right now. I feel pretty good yeah, that's about great. it. Yeah. The only tricky part now is that there are parts of the pig that have been in the water the whole time, and then you run the risk of over scalding. So we should probably pull it in the next, like right now. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> now this trick... Uh, you guys are going to start pulling upward. Just We're lift. Try to help as much as Easy. you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, like, just like that. There goes the skirt on the tail. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Actually, go. No, give me this real quick. I didn't need to more black and red. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Pull, pull. Keep going, keep going. There we go. There we go. There we go. That was easy. <laughs> Now, there are scrapers over on that table. I want you to grab 
and just scrape like that. And just try to find a spot. If you get tired, pass it on to someone else. Coming up for the easy M. Really, we have never done it before. <laughs> Do you want to go like with the grain, against the grain? Does any of that matter? Does it matter? No? Guess, guess not. <laughs> yeah, the skin is coming right off, huh? It's a little bit bigger than ideal. Yeah. So when, when you put pencils down in terms of the face, right? Yeah, he face said is the, the hard part to do with all the because the kick was, so or the when pig was okay, kicking. He kind of I usually, opened it up more if than someone's he working normally on it, would. I don't stop them. <laughs> that sounds like a funny thing. No, because it's awesome. After we cut the head off, we'll clean it up even more because the head is going to be food in a couple different forms. We also want it to be clean, just like the feet. The whole reason we're doing this process is to utilize the whole carcass and you. Most people aren't going to want to eat a head that's got hair on it, <laughs> so we want to remove that. Yeah. Right. So, so pull the opposite direction. <laughs> Sorry. No, I didn't answer your question really, though, did I? So, if you're going to clean hair off later, you're okay with leaving a little bit on it still? Now? Yeah. But if it comes off easily now, try to get it off. One thing that's really important, though, if you want to carry on this mission and do this at home. And you want people to get on board with you, you get that hog as clean as you possibly can before it ends up in the kitchen. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, I, I trust this. I trust this process. This looks like recognizable food. You bring an absolutely hairy hog into the kitchen. You're not going to have people want to join you today. Sometimes the hair gets in the way of the Anyone pop any toenails off? It's like one of the best parts. Of the <laughs> Showed so him how to do it. It's like popping a pimple. Yeah, it's so satisfying. Yeah. Usually, if you squeeze it and like twist, they pop off. Usually, pinch the sides if you can, like a, a broad side of it. Like if you pinch it like here and kind of twist. I'm setting you up. Probably it's probably not gonna work. It's a real jerk move. Oh, it's coming. I've heard a pop. I'm just twisting. Because that pop is like a suction. You're like breaking the suction of it uh -huh. on the, and then when it twists. Oh, so now, if it's not coming, oh. you can put this right in there yeah, and just yeah. pull it off. It should come off. There you go. Now it's in the water. It's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and then there should be a one down here. here. And then the bigger toenails we'll have to work on a little bit. They usually don't pop pop off quite as easily. Anybody else want to try? Is there a preference for shaving or burning afterwards? Both of them leave the follicle in the skin, so neither one of them is ideal. Um, usually we do a shaving quickly because it gets off more hair quick faster than the singeing. The singeing is usually for like tiny little hairs that are not. Like shaving this side of the pig is easy. When you get in around the ears, the head, the toenails, it's harder to shave well. So that's usually what we're saying.